All right, hey everybody. Um, we're still working, I think, maybe to get the slides going, but um, in the interest of not sitting here for my entire talk time to just wind down, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, and we'll figure it out. So this will be a little bit of a different format than I prepared, but let's see what uh, the technical team can come up with, and I apologize uh, for, for kind of this inconvenience. Um, I'm Alex. I'm the COO of a project called Alio. Uh, Alio is a platform for private applications that's powered by zero-knowledge cryptography. Um, I'm actually really excited that I get to follow the last speaker uh, who talked a lot about minor extractable value and front running. Um, I think this, that problem in particular is one that I think really will require privacy uh, enabled technologies powered, I think, by zero knowledge proofs to solve. And that's actually one of the use cases that we see uh, for our new platform. So um, in a little more detail, so Alio is a layer one blockchain. But in addition to that, you know, there's, there's kind of a whole stack to this platform that we've built. Um, the base layer is what we call Snark OS, which itself is a blockchain. Um, this blockchain is a proof of work based chain. And one of the interesting, interesting things about it is miners themselves have to compute zero knowledge proofs. And they do that as part of the mining process. We, we built it that's in this way so as to hopefully encourage uh, acceleration of this, uh, you know, of, of zero knowledge proofs, just in the same way we've seen progress in Bitcoin mining, where, you know, Satoshi was mining Bitcoin on his CPU, uh, you know, 10 years ago. And now it's, of course, you know, it's whole, whole ASIC farms, right? So you've had, you've had advancements on the algorithm level, on the software level, and on the hardware level. So we're trying to bake that into our layer one as well, because ultimately, you know, this new technology is very exciting, but, you know, it does still, unfortunately, it has a way to go in terms of accelerated, you know, acceleration. So we're hoping we can, we can incentivize that through our consensus algorithm. Um, above this, so this is kind of, that's the base layer blockchain. Unlike some other blockchains, specifically Ethereum and, and kind of Ethereum's kin, Alio does not have an on-chain execution model. So we use an off-chain execution model called Snark VM. And it's actually kind of similar to how a ZK rollup works, where it's basically you're, you're generating a zero knowledge proof off chain about a certain computation, and then you're submitting the result of that on chain for anyone to be able to verify. The advantages of this are a few. One of, one of them is privacy, which I mentioned a minute ago, right? So as, as the last presenter, you know, uh, very convincingly pointed out, um, the fact that miners can see exactly what you're doing through every step of the process as your transaction gets executed has Positives and also negatives. In this model, you're the only one who sees the inputs to your computation, and then out of it, you submit a proof with potentially an output, you know, that others can verify, um, and then that that's basically the way in which you interact with programs. So in that model, a miner looks at the transaction or the proof. There's, they, they don't see anything that they can use other than, you know, just the fact that, the that, that there's a fee associated with it and there's a transaction. So there's no minor extractable value. Um, so, very, so it's very similar to how Zcash works. Like a nice heuristic to think about Alio is, you know, Ethereum and Zcash kind of combined and had a baby. So Zcash does have has a very similar model where you submit a proof as a transaction and, uh, and then miners can verify it. The, other, the last thing I'll touch on here is the, the other advantage of this is um, efficiency, right? So recomputing re every transaction, every state transition through all of time for every transaction is very expensive, right? And this is why gas exists and this is why there's various, you know, features. It's why, you know, it's, it's why arguably, you know, Ethereum is a little bit slow is because of this requirement. So by having a, a system where only one party proves and everyone else verifies means you can get much greater efficiency. Um, and then what I was going to talk about today, which I don't think I'm going to be able to talk about since I'm having technical issues, um, is uh, the Leo programming language. So we created our own programming language and compiler architecture to make it easy for developers to write zero knowledge proof powered applications. We just see a show of hands. Who in here has a Masters or PhD in cryptography. That's what I thought. So this, <laughs> so the, you know, it's it's very. I mean, in my opinion, it's the most exciting technology coming up. You know, it's most exciting and probably most underrated technology that's out there today. Um, and the reality is, it's very inaccessible to almost every dev out in the ecosystem. And so what we're trying to do at Alio with Leo specifically is make this something to put that power in your hands to enable you to use this technology without having to like again, be a PhD in cryptography. Um, and right now, the way the, the, the language works, it's very Rust-like, there's some JavaScript-like elements, but so it should feel very familiar to anyone who's, you know, written in, in certainly in the blockchain ecosystem. Um, but, but in addition, we also have a, a compiler, which takes programs, compiles them down to kind of a low-level proof format called R1CS. And one important thing I want to mention to you about this compiler is that we've done a lot of work to formally verify it. And I don't think there's 
any programming language that has been formally verified in a couple decades, if I recall. Um, we feel this is really important because as, you know, I don't need to tell anyone in this audience, bugs happen and, you know, it's bad enough when they're introduced by potentially programmers or, you know, missed by, by auditors, but, you know, they can also happen in the compilation step when programs become compiled. And those are almost the worst kind of bugs because no one knows they're there until you just trip on them. And even worse, in this context, when you're talking about private programs, either in, a, in an L2 context, in a ZK rollup, or on Alio's platform, you might, there might be a bug, and you might never even know it's, it's, it exists or has been exploited. There was, a, there was a bug in Zcash, actually, a few years back, for those of you who might remember, where um, it was an infinite minting bug. So someone could have minted an infinite number of Zcash tokens. And I, I use the term could have because we actually have no idea if it was ever exploited. Um, and obviously that's bad when you're talking about systems that are theoretically designed to move around lots of value. So anyway, we, bu we built this formally verified compiler architecture so that, you know, I can't stop, I can't help it if you write a bug, but the compiler mathematically will be unable to deviate basically from the intent that the programmer kind of inputs into the program. Um, so that's Leo. And then on top of Leo, we have, you know, basically kind of some developer experience stuff. It's been amazing. I've been in the space now for seven years. And uh, it's, just, it's been incredible to watch, particularly the Ethereum ecosystem develop. But I do remember the early days of trying to write Solidity programs. And uh, there was a lot of things that you know, didn't exist then that people have built over time. Um, good explorers, for example, um, like little, uh, little things like Truffle, Ganache, things to make it easier for you to write, deploy, test your application. So we're trying to build all of that up front to kind of make it very user friendly uh, or, and developer friendly. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then I guess maybe the last thing that I'll, uh, I'll take some time, let's see, we might have a little bit of time for questions, but um, yeah, like maybe the last thing I'll talk about is some use cases since, you know, I've already touched on a couple. Again, one I think is, uh, one I think really important use case that we're aiming to tackle is the problem of minor extractable value in front running, which, um, you know, again, I think in some cases may not be that bad if you're talking about low value trades, but if you're talking about, for example, like if you try to put an OTC desk on chain, it uh, becomes much more difficult. And we think you can do that on a platform like Alio is to have like on-chain OTC liquidity. That, so it solves the problem of minor extractive value. It also actually, building using this architecture does something else. It makes regulatory compliance actually easier. I think this is kind of a counterintuitive thing when a lot of people think about privacy enhancing technologies is that zero knowledge cryptography specifically is interesting because it lets you prove a fact without verifying why it's true. But by doing that, you could create, for example, like a regulated stablecoin that says, hey, only the only people who are able to transact with this stablecoin are not, you know, are not blacklisted by, you know, by any government agency, right? Um, now, of course, you have to manage the identity part of that. That's I'm, I'm leaving that aside. But the point being is, you can basically encode the logic just like you encode logic into Solidity programs. But here, that logic is entirely private, so I don't have to know who I'm transacting with, or rather, the regulator doesn't have to know who's transacting with who. But they can be convinced. That, um, that it's not with a person that you know, they, for whatever reason, don't want you to transact with. And not only is that good from a regulatory compliance standpoint, it's actually way cheaper. <laughs> this is why many banks around the world, like EY, for example, is investigating this technology to use you know, for compliance reasons. Because the way compliance works today is people generally just, there's like entire departments of people whose job it is to just go through transactions and be like, that looks suspect, that one looks suspect, ah, that one's fine. So. You know, this, this potentially represents a huge kind of cost-saving uh, cost measure. Um, yeah, another application that I'm really excited about um, is gaming. Uh, I don't know, have you, how many people in here have played Dark Forest? Oh, man. Okay, all of you need to just stop what you're doing and go, go check that out. I think the new round is running. So Dark Forest is a game on Ethereum, actually, and uh, it's, a, it's what's called a hidden information game. It's kind of a, like a space strategy style game, but it's really cool because for one specific reason, it uses zero knowledge cryptography to disguise or hide the positions of the individual players. Um, which, if you think about playing a game on a platform like Ethereum where everything is public by default, you know, it's kind of like playing chess, right? Where you have chess, you know, you can, I can see your pieces, you can see my pieces, and we just move and we, ha we have the same information. But you know, there's many, many categories of games out there which are very interesting where, that rely upon this concept of hidden information. And it's very difficult to do that on a platform like Ethereum at the base layer because of the transparency of it, right? But using something like Alio, you can build like a Dark Forest-like app or like, a, you know, if anyone's ever played the game Werewolf, which is a fantastic game, by the way, um, or Among Us, 
Um, you know, you could build things like that uh, or Battleship, an even simpler example on Alu. And so it's a category that uh, we don't think has been explored and we're, and we're really excited about. Uh, and the last one that I'll talk about is identity. Um, a lot, of, a lot of chains out there, a lot of applications targeting the problem of decentralized identity. Uh, it's a really hard problem, but in the world that we live in that is increasingly digital, um, you know, it's increasingly important that we, f that we solve this problem and figure out. And no matter what use case, or no matter, no matter what way it gets solved, whether you go with the W3C self-sovereign identity standards, all of them effectively require privacy on some level, right? Because you don't want to reveal <laughs> you know, it's like, think about if, I, if you send me something to my Ethereum wallet, not only do you know what I have right now, you can see what I've done for all of time, right? And if you apply that to, like, identity, you know, if I show you my driver's license, you shouldn't be able to know, like, every, you know, all of my financial trans transactions. So uh, identity is another use case that, that uh, we're very interested to look at. Um, I'm almost, I'm going to conclude a little bit early, but I did want to just tell you guys about one other thing that um, actually is a new initiative. So I guess maybe... To close out some stuff about Alio, so we're launching Mainnet in Q3. We just wrapped up our incentivized test net today. Um, we're excited to have uh, a lot of great backers, and we just raised a Series B of 200 million led by Cora Capital and SoftBank. Um, so we're really excited to, uh, to bring this technology out to the world and uh, in Q3. Uh, but let me tell you about one other thing that's, um, that we're working on, actually not, not just Alio, but that we're trying to organize uh, industry-wide is a collaboration to bring about acceleration for zero-knowledge cryptography. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, these algorithms and this technology is really exciting, but it's very nascent in its early days. And building in an economic incentive to make things faster, I think, is really ultimately what's going to be important to make it practical. A lot of people forget, actually, I'm kind of old, probably older than a lot of people in this audience, but I remember when, you know, the internet, things weren't always HTTPS by default. And one of the reasons that they became HTTPS by default is Intel and other chip companies started baking in cryptographic instructions into hardware. And it made it 100 times at least faster. So you have or orders of magnitude of improvement for those basic algorithms. So we want to make the same thing happen for zero-knowledge cryptography. We, we want to make these essential algorithms that, that enable the provers and verifiers to kind of do this magic of verifiable computation to uh, be baked in at as low level in hardware as possible. And this, it's such an exciting early domain. And, uh, and so we're organizing this event called the Z Prize, which we're going to be doing in collaboration with the ETH Foundation. Um, and a few others. Uh, we're going to announce a little bit more next week. But the idea is basically to run a competition in the model of like the X Prize or the DARPA Grand Challenge, if you guys are familiar with that. And we're going to put, so I just said we raised a bunch of money. We're going to put two, uh, $10 million um, worth of money that we have to incentivizing um, teams to come and build optimized provers and verifiers to make this technology practical for everyone. And the, and the, the only requirement for us is that everything gets open sourced. And um, you know, personally, as someone who's been at the space, you know, I'm, I've been at Alio for almost two years, but I've been around longer than that. I think one of the most exciting things about this industry that we're all in, this ecosystem, is that it's all about a community, it's all about open source, and it's all about collaboration to build something that never could have been built before. I mean, just look at, look at this conference as a perfect example, right? Like, everybody coming together around the Ethereum ecosystem, which started as an open source project, you know, in the metaphorical garage, right? And uh, so, yeah, so I think, you know, hopefully in five or ten years, there's a whole swath of new projects, Alio-related, non-Alio-related, that can use this technology that will hopefully come out of the Z-Prize competition, and it can enable entirely new applications that no one has seen of or even dreamed of up to that point. Thanks very much. Uh, Alex, we actually have two minutes left if you want to take one question quickly. Who's the lucky questioner? Fascinating stuff. Uh, can you explain a bit on the Alio programming semantics? What what can be made private and what is public? For example, if you want to build a private DEX, is the uh, exchange rate public or can it be made private or public depending on the programmer? Yeah, it's a great question. So you have a, you have a lot of flexibility as a programmer with what you choose to make private and make public. And you can do this by this, this concept of something called a view key which lets you, it's, it's basically like you can use a view key. So the way Alio works, and maybe a little more detail to, for, the, for the purpose of answering this question is, there's actually a couple of zero knowledge proofs that are wrapped in almost like an onion structure. And you can use this view key to basically 
you can publish this as part of the transaction, then people can then take the view key, decode effectively part of the transaction, and then use that to you know, ascertain what the current state of the program is or ascertain your, how you, you know, what your state transitions effect on that state was. And then through that, you can have these kind of multiplayer applications like a DEX. Um, yeah, so there's, and so you, you kind of, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of like what you make public and what you don't. Um, you know, of course, the easy thing to do if you want it to be fully public, you just publish a view key for everything, right? And you're like, okay, then you're kind of just the same as Ethereum, but nonetheless, you kind of can choose what you want to share. So it's private by default, not public by default. And I can, if you got more questions that are in detail, I think I'm out of time, but I can answer them outside. Uh, thanks, everybody. <laughs>